Hey everyone, welcome to Buzzing About Romance. I am Becky, and I am super excited to be joined by Leah. Hi, Leah. Hi, Becky. And Heather. Hey, Heather. Hey, Becky. Um, so he- Leah and I are coming off of the HA Readers event um, that we was held are. in Indianapolis, Indiana, over the first weekend of November. And it was amazing. It was so fun. It was the best time. Like we got Becky and I got to meet in person. Like we got to to hug and physically touch. So let me tell a little story about that. So Becky, today, say she let you hug her. <laughs> she did. I hugged lots of people over the weekend. Heather, there was a lot of hugging. But so Becky got this really cool typewriter while we were there because Mike Burrier found it. And so today, when I'm talking to her on the phone, she's like, "Look at what Mike got me." I'm like, "Becky, I was sitting next to you when." when he bought it for you she was like oh my god that's right you were <laughs> just she's be- like it doesn't usually happen like that so I just normally like was gonna tell you all about it I was I was so that's prepared so um it, we had the best time it was a small intimate signing I think there mm-hmm. were 35 authors um and mm-hmm. we have some new authors that we're going to discover and check out their mm-hmm. backlist um I know that we found a new romantic suspense author and I think mm-hmm. I found a new mafia author so yes. um yeah the, there was a nice blend of authors too like there were rom-com authors there were suspense authors there were there was like it was a nice eclectic group of people and I thought that it it just went really well yeah um we had there was this cocktail party friday night and i hung out a little bit with kelly from boobies and newbies podcast and Mm -hmm. um i was spilling tea but i was also getting all these free tickets to have all these free drinks (laughs) we had a lot of free tickets because they're like so you got two tickets for going to the cocktail hour but then some of the authors and like people that like we know somewhat for like I'm not going to drink. Here are my tickets. And then we like randomly got some from other people. So we got a lot of tickets. So I cleaned out my pockets. I had four unused tickets. How could you? I had at least eight drinks in that event. You all were standing. There's no, I wouldn't be standing. I would have been out. We were, we were feeling good, but honestly, by the end of it, the bartender gave zero fucks. Like I ordered a drink and she was like, she was holding like the jigger cup and like filled it, but it was like tilted. So it was like filling and going into the cup at the same time, but it was delightful. Yeah. The, the gin was good. The vodka was good. Yeah. The company was good. The like, company it just was, was amazing really good all around. We got to meet uh hive members, which was so exciting. We got to meet mm-hmm. Susie. We um, did. And she's so great. Oh my God. And so Susie and I great. had a one bed trope because we, did. we had one bed and i i did put a picture in the discord um yeah. carrie who we've known for three years uh-huh. and we got to hang out uh and we got to hang out with carolina mm-hmm. and, and one kelly of kelly k and kelly k and one of our listeners and newer to patreon amy she mm-hmm. came over in fr- saturday night and hung out and played game night with us we played romance reader versus the world which mm-hmm. is kind of like romance version of cards against humanity there so are some really fun. There are some really Very funny fun. cards in there and girl child play with with us also. And she was like, I can't even handle you people anymore. She knew more things than we did, though. This is true. Like a little. <laughs> OK, so if you do you know what rule 34 is? No. See. OK, so but I'll bet rules- you five. I will bet you five dollars that your oldest boy child knows what rule oh, 34 um- is. So basically, if it exists, there's a porn. That's, That's rule, rule 34. 34. Oh. You should you should ask him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> See what he <laughs> oh, says. Don't worry, I'm going to, right? I'm actually like texting him <laughs> as we speak. Anyway, it was an amazing event. Everybody should be on the lookout. This is going to be an every other year event. It'll be mm-hmm. um, in sometime in 2025 will be the next event i don't know if it'll still be in november if they're going to move it sooner into the year i'm not exactly sure on those um but we will we'll be back in some form we'll we'll be back there yeah we will be back but it was really well done tina and emily did a great job putting this off and i give them so many props for a first time like signing it was a first experience for us but and everyone that we talked to like 
talked about how well it went authors and like readers who yeah. went like and the I'm reader sure crowd was lovely here and there the reader crowd was lovely the, yes so that mm -hmm. was good stuff well it sounds fun it was positive great. things all around um, maybe flights won't be 500 dollars to indianapolis well again. just you know Susie <laughs> was willing to like drive up to minnesota to get you and then drive you down and but i know down. it didn't so, work with days off that's the deal yeah you know we understand we jobs understand. happen they suck. I mean, if I'm being 100% honest, if I could just read full time, who wouldn't love that job, right? Well, it has its benefits and then it has mm -hmm. its not benefits. <laughs> yeah. Right? There's pros and cons to it all. Um, so on this, so let's get to the episode because, you know, we're not going to just talk about HEA and our chaos. Um, I mean, we could though. We could. Um, so on this episode of Buzzing About Romance, we are going to talk about 10 trends in romance books and our thoughts on them. Some of these might be bookish icks. Um, some of these might be things that we're really loving about romance right now. Um, but these are 10 trends that we're seeing, observing, and we have thoughts on them. Lots and lots of thoughts. I bet I have less thoughts than the both of you. <laughs> I'm sure you have thoughts. I have thoughts. Your thoughts mean... But for sure less than you guys <laughs> but also maybe not as mean maybe. as ours either <laughs> yeah so in this episode heather will be playing the role of good cop <laughs> okay she has her minnesota nice pants up uh leo will be playing the role of mean cop and i will be the cop wearing the sparkly petty pants i Narky. don't like the sparkles Sorry. but i do like petty pants <laughs> I have the hard pants on today, so. Hard pants are the worst. I have not put hard pants on in two days. Well, I had to go into the public. I had to go to the job, and then I had to go to the children's things. Do you know I sent you a TikTok today that said, you know, there are things about the world that I don't no, like. I had, oh. It was like going outside. Mm -hmm. I went outside, and there were people. And then it just stops. It like, just no stops. joke, I had to watch it twice because I was only listening to it the first time. It's like, what happened to it? And then, like, you have to see his face. And it's like, there's people. And he, like, kind of rolls his eyes. I'm like, oh, my God, that guy is me. Mm -hmm. You felt seen, didn't you? I did. So did Shauna. Shauna she said she felt she seen as well. Um, okay. So these are in no particular order. This is not our most grievance or whatever these trends are in no particular order um so well, you doubled up i see here <laughs> by accident so we might only have nine trends but wait no yes number four and number nine there there's two of the same thing in there oh well i've got others listed as bonus so <clears throat> it's okay we'll come up with something um okay first trend we are currently seeing in romance is no third act breakup what are our thoughts? Um, I personally like a no third act breakup, but it isn't for every book. Like you can't, it's not every book and it can't be every time, right? Like sometimes it's needed, sometimes it's not. I think if there's an outside um, source causing a dark moment, mm -hmm. like a kidnapping or... Um, a death or something homicidal like, maniac like somebody gets shot right like or a car blows up like if there's that kind of thing then i can understand it not needing a third act breakup because that is a situation that's going to test the resilience of your affection and how deeply do you care for this person right because mm -hmm. well, honestly like if you look back at the genre of romance a lot of times romantic suspense does not have that third act breakup they have a third act event yes sometimes they have a breakup too but like there's always there has to be some sort of big event or catalyst in that third act that like creates this dynamic moment in the story mm -hmm. In your with the the new third act no breakup trend sometimes you don't get that and just like a continuation of what's happening and i feel there's like a lull like you need that moment you need something things feel to unresolved mm -hmm. yeah and on like i was reading one book the other day and there was no third act breakup 
And they basically, they come to terms that they're going to be together. It was kind of an okay. enemies to lovers kind of gig. They decide they're going to be together. And they are have the sex. And then they're laying in bed, talking about things. And then it jumps. The next chapter is epilogue one. Mm -hmm. And it was like, wait. Because it was really, it was like opposites attract, wrong side of the tracks kind of like, you know, class difference kind of thing was what the book was. Mm -hmm. And it, I just was like. I felt unfinished when you were done. I'm like, yeah, where's the, I, I don't know. I also am one of those people that believe like no third act breakup, whatever. It can be done, but I also need miscommunication. I think that the miscommunication is synonymous to romance and I need that I need that moment that gasp of like my stomach dropping a little bit I need to feel emotion well and that's the thing like it doesn't necessarily have to be even be a breakup like I mean how many books have we read where like the third act breakup like air quotes around breakup there is just like a really big fight and they don't talk for 12 hours or like 24 hours or like two days and it's like they're working through their feelings of this fight it's like that is reality like you like you need that small test because i mean there's always going to be big tests in relationships relationships aren't perfect perfect you're gonna fight you're gonna bitch like you're gonna need space from each other but like you have to like you need that catalyst to show like these are two people in this story that are capable of working through this problem in a mature way so you believe the fact that like they're able to get through other things. Me, I don't like manufactured drama. So when a girl gets all annoyed about something super stupid, that like frankly just pisses me off more and makes me not like her. So if it's like not, if it's like a stupid miscommunication or you know what I mean? Like I, I want it to be believable. Like, you know, I'm not sure I want think about Carrie Ann Ryan, one of Carrie Ann Ryan's books. Like she lives in California and he lives in Texas. They have to figure out how to make that work. Like that's, mm -hmm. yeah. you know what I mean? That's like believable. Well, but here's the other thing. Like I read mafia or I read a lot of billionaire romances or hockey romances finances are not necessarily going to be a sticking point in their relationship. Mm -hmm. And in our reality, in real world, finances are a big sticking point. Like yeah. if I think about the momental fights that have happened in my own relationship, oftentimes it comes down to finances mm -hmm. and um, you know, how we're spending money, what needs bought, what's broken, that kind of thing in romance Yes, this is an escape. And yes, we aren't going to see that the dishwasher broke and that the woman is freaking out of how she's going to pay for the dishwasher, right? Uh -huh. So we need something. I need something to show the strength of their relationship because then that gives me hope. Mm -hmm. You know, that gives me that, oh, it's going to last. Like it cements the HEA. And again, this is why this will lead into the next trend that I really, it, I, I don't care about this trend because I don't read these things. Um, but if you don't have a dark moment and you don't have a breakup, then the author has to write three, four, and 12 epilogues for Wait, us what book to did you read that had 12 epilogues? Or are you okay. just being facetious? I'm there? being facetious a little bit. I did read okay. one that had five epilogues. What was the point of that? Well, so the one was like the next morning when they tell everybody to together. But and that's then, not an epilogue. That's then it was six chapter. weeks, but it's marked as epilogue. The next was like six weeks later, two years later. And then, um, and then the, like the next one was like, you know, 40 years in the future. And then the next one was the future, the next chapter in the next book. That's too much. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Like you don't epilogues are fucking ridiculous. Okay. Like well, I don't I don't mind no. one. I don't mind one. But it has to be like in the future. Like but mm -hmm. it has to also be like you can end that book at the end of 
the final chapter and not have the epilogue for the book to make sense. I don't mind them in that sense. I mind them when the book does not feel complete and like there's an epilogue that should have just been labeled chapter 27 instead of the epilogue because I my epilogue is my extras. It is not my finishings. I don't mind too. And here's here's why too. Okay, I'm with Leah. I, I need it to wrap up at the end of the book. The two, I wouldn't, I, if it's one person's perspective and then another person's perspective, that doesn't bug me. But the four, I don't, there's no, that's just chapters at that point. Yeah. Like, why are we doing that? But That's just dumb. But we get, but if you think about it, if there's three epilogues, so let's take like a Melanie Harlow book. You get one epilogue from, I know you don't read her. <laughs> you get one epilogue like that's, you know, a couple days later, a couple weeks or a month or six weeks later. Then you get another. And then there's the bonus epilogue to download that's like when they're in their 80s. Okay, I like when they're in their 80s. Like, I'm not going to lie. Girl loves that. Like, I love, you know. I don't, I don't mind an 80s epilogue either. Yeah, I like, again, I'm going to go back to Carrie and Ryan because, like, I'm literally obsessed with her. <laughs> she had one where they're like, much older and they're married and have kids and you get to see this new side of them and it just oh I love it there's this really hot scene and it's great love it well and I honestly like I don't I don't mind it if an author is doing like a bonus epilogue for like fun or something like that and they like put it to their website like that's fine because it's like you're revisiting those characters but it's like a like six months or so after the book has come out. Cause Anna Hackett did one recently where it was an epilogue for like her Norcross, but it like brought in like Sentinel guys and it was like tied stuff together, but they're older. They have kids. Like it's way far in the future and stuff like that doesn't bug me. Cause it's like, Ooh, like we get to see them like in their element, like with their kids and how they deal with them. But like, it wasn't part of the book. Like at the end of those books, like I believed that those characters were like together for the long haul. Yeah. I need to download that because that I missed that. How did you miss that? Dude, you I don't psycho. Know. <laughs> psycho. Now it's we're going to you, you were a poor stalker. You did not stalk well. Okay, recently, clearly. Apparently. So when these epilogues become <laughs> bonus scenes that are exclusive to certain editions in the stores, because uh, this is no. a trend that we are seeing. So let me let me get this all out before Leah like goes psychic psycho here. Not psychic, psycho. I okay. mean, I might be psychic too. So we are seeing Trad Pub, particularly with um books that were previously indie published that are now being published, Trad Pub distribution paperbacks, that certain retailers are getting specific editions with bonus scenes. Those bonus scenes are held in those editions for um I think the longest amount of time I saw was nine months on a Tessa Bailey book. And then after the nine months are up, it, those bonus scenes will be available on her website, but it'll never be in a paperback print except for that edition that was at that specific retailer. Now I have gamers in my household and a lot of times there were specific downloadable content that was exclusive to where you pre-ordered your video game from. Like if you ordered it from GameStop, you got the GameStop content. If you ordered from the website or the, you know, manufacturer or whatever, you got their extra bonus content. And then I think later on it became like either a free download or you could purchase like an in-game, in-app type purchase. So I think that it's going to be interesting. Are we going to see these bonus epilogues, these three and four bonus epilogues that maybe have been in books but indie authors are going to try to compete a little bit with our with trad pub and are these going to be behind a paywall so because we already kind of see that a little bit carrie and ryan mm -hmm. writes us shorts in patreon so are we going to see sub stacks or more patrons with short stories and bonus content that is similar because you think about it some of that similar to exclusive retailers Okay, now you may put I've your petty pants on. I always hated that. I always have hated that. I thought it was like the dumbest thing ever. It bugged me because it's like, 
why like why can't it just be like everywhere why does it have to be like walmart exclusive or target exclusive like seriously what happens if i don't have a target near me like you are creating this niche and like location which is fine but there are people that literally do not live near that kind of store like they have they are incapable of getting it and a lot, some of those like you have to buy them in the store also like right. they're not available online so it's like you are you are alienating an entire group of people because this is how it's laid out so there is a book that i like a lot that isn't romance but it is a very popular book and it was a book club book for somebody over in the uk and you could only get it over in Great Britain. And she did an exclusive interview that was printed in there. And then she did an interview with the male main character available there. Well, it's not accessible here in the United States and it's not available anywhere only in those books and it sort of like creates this like I need to have it and then people pirate it like mm -hmm. unknowingly and then share it and they don't mean to be like to break the law but they want to read this stuff and so yeah. I, it's not I don't know I, I mean yeah yeah it creates a little bit of FOMO you know for those mm -hmm. that have and the haves and have nots of um the world i also think that you know and i have my feels on indie bookstores and safe spaces for romance readers i don't feel that there are many indie bookstores out there that are safe spaces for romance readers and they aren't going to be indie romance either right because it's a little more harder and a little more expensive to get indie romance books but by publishers creating target exclusive editions and walmart exclusive editions they're saying to the indie bookstore, you aren't as important in our marketing as Walmart, mm -hmm. as Target. So then you are now creating class differences. Well, and that's the thing. Like, if you're going to do a special edition like that, that's fine. Like, that's like a publisher's choice and an author's choice by signing that contract. And especially, like, if you are eventually going to make it free for everybody, like, eventually, because yes, I know how contracts work. Sometimes like there are clauses, like they're like publishing itself. Like you can only, there's windows, like pre and post publishing windows. Like I get that. But if you're going to do stuff like that, like you can't like exclude the person who doesn't have the opportunity to go to that place. Like you are alienating readers. Like you are ruining an experience for there's readers. A there's a new book paperback that came out um kind of a follow-up from a very popular series it's a college hockey series it was really big on tiktok for a while there was a follow-up with a special cover and um, the author had specific indie bookstores that were offering like playing cards or whatever mm -hmm. so i purchased from an indie bookstore and it felt better. Did I spend a little bit more? Yep. Could I probably have, I could have ordered it from Barnes and Noble, but I chose not to. I yeah. ordered it from a little bookstore. Mm -hmm. They shipped it and it was like packaged beautifully, way better than Barnes and Noble or Amazon could ever do, by the way. Mm -hmm. I feel that we've ordered from, Lee and I both have ordered from Love Swept, Love Sweet Arrow, which is a small indie romance bookstore out of Chicago. Mm -hmm. We ordered a special Kilby Blades release box for mm -hmm. um, her Smarty Pants release. And I ordered the Olivia Dade um, because that's where the historical old school the clinch. Step yeah. Step back cover is for her releases. Um, and I did order her new release that's coming out in February with the special cover wrap because I need it. Because of the course she would. The hot book that, you know, came out today on the 7th. The, I don't even know what it was. Um, Iron Second Flame. One, flame. Yeah. Iron Flame. My oldest wanted it. Ordered Iron Flame from Amazon. Came all bent. Like, yeah. seriously, Amazon? Well, and I actually saw where people pre-ordered and it's back-ordered. 
Oh, it's back ordered. And I'm curious too. There's, if you take the, um, so the iron flame came out today, originally it was ordered. It was supposed to be black sprayed edges. Mm -hmm. And then if you take off the, um, the wrap, the paper, the hardback wrap the on dust it, jacket. the dust jacket, there is the word I was looking for. Um, the spine actually says fourth wing. Oh. It doesn't say iron flame. Interesting. That, so yeah. I'm taking off the dust jacket right now to find out. I'm totally. What is your what is your spine what say? Your iron oh, it says flame. iron flame. Mm. So Dummy bought one too. I should ask her if hers says what? fourth wing or iron yeah. flame. But mine are the black pages. Yeah. Or the spray edges spray. or whatever. Yeah. Anyway, um, okay. Next thing. <laughs> One of the I just think there's a lot of missteps with this whole trend. <laughs> One of the trends that we are seeing happening is indie books, popular indie books, some indie books that have been around for a minute, some that are, as they're hitting the shelves, being bought up and purchased by Tradpub. Some of them are just being bought for distribution paperback rights and sub rights. Others are being bought full out. So then mm -hmm. they're disappearing one day they're in Kindle unlimited and the next day it's gone. Um, I would like to caveat this by saying we understand why authors want to give up their distribution of paperback rights to trad pub. It is an excellent business maneuver. And in yeah. a previous episode, we did describe and explain sub rights. Um, yeah. But I understand why they're doing it because this is a way to help them get the achievement of New York Times best-selling author. Because an indie author does not have the ability to set up a distribution chain to sell enough books to get themselves the uh, New York Times bestseller. It's a little harder to do as an indie mm -hmm. distributing all your own things. Well, and some of these authors, when they sell their distribution rights for the paperbacks and stuff, it does take a lot of work off their plate. We are not discounting that. Like and if that's your thing, like, and you need to make those decisions. And I think go for it. But here's where I'm struggling with this trend. It's not that There's they're no selling transparency. it. There is the lack of transparency and the lack of explaining to their readers. And maybe it's because these authors are stupid and don't, don't understand how it works. Now, I will say that Butcher and the Blackbird book, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that author was incredibly transparent. Well, like, and that's the thing. From like, the get. When, like, as soon as it was signed, like, this is leaving Kindle Unlimited on this day. Like, you had, like d-day for that book like so you knew like when it was coming and that is one thing that i appreciate from that author like she like was vocal about what was happening like she let everybody know like this is what happened like yes like it wasn't like personal like information about the deal but like she was very vocal about like the how things worked well and i know that elsie silver and i know that um Sarah Kate mm -hmm. worked in their contract. No, Elsie Sever didn't. Sarah Kate worked in her contract that gave her ability to publish the books that were unfinished in her series with people covers mm -hmm. so that her covers will all match. That was yes. very important to her for her readers. Mm -hmm. But then we've had others, Anna Hong, Elsie Silver, Chloe Lease, who are going to, they've sold their paperbacks or sold their distribution Distro rights. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, Chloe sold all rights. They all went over to, um, I think she sold, she sold to Penguin Random House straight. Um, those covers are changing mid-series. Mm -hmm. And like for Chloe, she's got That's one book left. Yeah. She has one book left in that Bergman family series. six book series, right? Yeah, six It'll or seven book books. Six. Yeah. So you have all your books and you're waiting for that final book sorry friend your covers aren't gonna match i'd be so pissed well and if you yep. want the closest to the matching cover the one that's going to be the closest in the color and in the styling you have to order it from the uk mm -hmm. from water waterstone books yeah 
and pay international shipping. That's the way to get it. And I feel- But it's still not going to match. And I can almost guarantee the size will be different. I think it matches pretty close because so here's something we don't the people don't realize is you cannot transfer ownership of covers from my entity to your entity. You cannot buy mm -hmm. my cover. No. I'm the only one who owns the right to my cover. So like Chloe bought those covers. She cannot transfer the rights and use of those covers to Penguin Random House. That would require a contract between the artist and the publisher, and it gets really sticky, and it's really a lot of work, which is why we see cover changes. Mm -hmm. But but I think for your fans, for your readers that made your books so popular that you got this trad pub contract, where's the loyalty and love to those to those readers? Yeah, because it's like, oh, now if you want your covers to match, you have to buy all the books again. And here we are. We're speaking from privilege that we get to buy books. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about our covers matching. Yeah. And we don't even read these books. Like, we read, okay, we read the books. We read we the e-books. We don't so read the paperbacks. Physical books. Like, so there's, there's that. I, my issue comes, and I, again, what Becky said, I, I know it's a business decision. decision. Mm -hmm. I support indie authors because I want to support them. I cannot fathom spending $10 on an ebook because I don't enjoy reading paperbacks anymore. That's just, mm -hmm. and I would say your prolific readers don't read paperbacks very often. Mm -mm. No. And to be honest, I already pay for Kobo Plus and I pay for Kindle Unlimited. So for me, I'm going to read from there first. Yeah, I I have a I have a tier. I have a top like limit that I will spend on an ebook and yeah. I will not I I have never went over that because I already I mean I I have my Kindle Unlimited and I have a small like a set of authors where I buy every book that they publish but if that mm -hmm. if those books would happen to go above my my top then I wouldn't be buying them anymore and that's the okay. thing like lots of people are on a budget and like things are getting more expensive and a ten dollar ebook is not in my budget no it's um okay so we've talked about indie to trad and this kind of goes with it and the cost of books mm -hmm. and yeah. ebooks. Um, but let's talk about the cover trends. Now, we did a whole episode on covers. Um, but one of the things that we're seeing right now are these vector illustrated covers that are faceless cartoon covers. <laughs> and there was one ridiculous one where the guy is wearing sunglasses and has eyebrows, but the woman's face is completely flat. Wait, but isn't that, is that the series that was just, it was like the new one, it was like the color scheme was very nice, but every single person on every single no. color had the exact same skin tone? No, well, that was one situation where everybody has the same skin tone and it makes you, when you line them all up like that, like we saw. It, there is no diversity. This author only white writes person to white person. person and all white people are the same color. Yes. And like, I mean, Becky, Heather, and I are all sitting here and we are all, th we're different shades, the three of us. Yes, we are mm -hmm. all white women, but we are all different colors of white. Yeah. Like, and that's the thing. Like, I, there's a movie from like the 80s, and I told everybody this when we were talking about it. There's a movie from the 80s, I think. And there literally is a scene where like, it's a, like a nightmare and dude has no face. And I think of that horror every single time and it creeps me out like i don't have a, an issue with a vector cover when it's in profile i i i have big issues with a vector cover that is one tone from the front because it gives me creepy movie vibes but also like there's no shadow like it's so flat and i hate it do you have thoughts on the faceless covers, Heather? I mean, I have less thoughts than you guys. I really loved the cover trend, you know, the cartoon cover. Like, 
or I'm a hand for an illustrated I don't cover. mind yeah, the a cartoon illustrated. cover. I think they're super cute, some of them, but some of them aren't great. Like, I definitely have a style, and if I don't like it, I guess, cool, I won't buy it. Lanny um, Kaufman are pretty much my style, which are the ones that do the Olivia Dade ones. Yeah, and I mean, I have a couple that are really cute, and but I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't like changing covers all the time. Okay, like, so, I don't love that. Like, so oh, that's the, the next part of this. It. That's the next part of this. Making 500 different covers for one book, special edition, editions, and then changing covers mid series, which we had an author do Weird. this. She changed covers mid series and basically told her readers sucks to be you but i'm changing to trend and she also did it with a stupid truck and a pumpkin that make no fucking sense to her books so okay there is a series and i really like the series but she changed it mid series and i'm still salty wait but is that did that but there's the one is that the one that changed and then changed back yeah like multiple times yeah. yes so you um, never I, knew what book you were gonna get just no, like totally oh, didn't surprise know. surprise but i think about like um i do like um have when there's multiple cover choices and you get to choose you don't have to have the like i think about helena hunting she has cute covers and then she has the boy covers and yeah. i like Carrie and but Ryan, they're, but they're both available all the time. Yeah, Carrie and Ryan does the same thing. I mean, love that. And I'm obsessed with the Patreon cover. We all know this. Uh, because sometimes, girl. sometimes those border the not suitable for work. Yeah, That's but they're mine, so mine like they are very good. Um, so I'm waiting. You should message her. Make sure. Yes, but I like to be able to choose. And I'm I'm a sucker for a, a cover with abs. Like I'm down. But the thing well, is, like, and Melanie you... Harlow learned real quickly that her her books did with better just with the a word person. cover. The object cover did not sell as well, or she didn't get the page reads on Runaway Love without the, the without dudes. the dude. So she brought so the she dudes now back. does too. Like she has her like special covers, and then she has her dudes, and that that is fine. Like. That is a, a trend we're seeing a little bit more of where authors are doing two covers. Like they have mm-hmm. the the basic cover. And part of that is like, if you are reading a paperback, there are some people that still don't feel comfortable having those paperbacks like in public. And that's fine if that is your yeah. thing. I totally. mean, I I don't use, I don't read a paperback. So I don't really have that issue, but also like it wouldn't bug me, but that's just me, me personally. Like I don't have any hangups, but they're like, we understand, like we know people like culturally, like it is very frowned upon for them to have things like that. And so having the option is fine. But the fact of the matter is like, unless like you have a valid reason for changing a cover halfway through a seat, like a season series, whatever you want to call it, like don't do it like now, there I will I, th- okay i Go will ahead. say on a publishing side of it in the past and we discussed this in the cover episode that we did which was really just a lecture of me like v- word vomiting all my cover knowledge education educating um you know we used to see in publishing there would be a cover for the hardback And then when it would go to paperback, you'd get a new cover and every new run. So usually there was a new run in mass market. It was usually a a million. So after a million copies sold, you would get a new cover because then it would then have the emblem over a million copies sold. Or if the author Mm -hmm. changed over. But you have to think that was old times where it was a little harder. But you also had to wait a year for the paperback. And you didn't have print on demand as authors do have now like amazon Mm -hmm. when you're ordering a paperback a lot of times it's print on demand meaning those books aren't in this current warehouse so they're going to print 20 more and that's why you're going to get your book and it's going to take maybe two days instead of one day to get to you Mm -hmm. um okay but what is your thought on all of these special edition book box exclusive covers okay as someone who was psycho and did all these book boxes and then they sit there and I'm like they're sitting on my shelf like and they make great kindling if some I mean you know what I mean like who do they matter to besides me my issue is oftentimes they do 
book one of a series. Mm-hmm. And then they, the rest of the series never gets touched with that special edition. And as like, as somebody who my, my paperbacks are my decoration, like, so I don't typically buy boxes like that unless I can get the full series, because if I'm going to buy a special edition series, Like I want all of the books, like if it's a standalone or it's a duet, that they've recovered into one single book. It doesn't bug me. But if you're going to special edition book one, but not two, three, four, five, and six, like why? See, that doesn't bug me at all. It bugs the shit out of me. Well, all I'm saying is if there was a book box. I like my things to match. If there was a book box with just like a special edition wild cover. I'd buy it. I'm done. So like Saxon um, James. Bitch, back off. Ian, he's mine. I would buy it too, but I, that doesn't mean he's mine. But like Saxon James and Eden Finley did that and they picked four different books of theirs and they're amazing. And yeah. I love their books. So I, but I like their books. But, yeah. so, but also too, but we see, we'll see the same book in like three different boxes and it's mm-hmm. all different covers. It's like, what, like why? Right. What is what is the point? Like if you're it gonna do it, like, pick a di- pick a different series. It causes because more then FOMO. you have. Well, that's the thing. There's FOMO, or you're having one person who is spending a hot like hundreds of dollars on the same book six different ways. Because there are people who will literally buy the same book six different ways, and I mean, if that's what you want to spend your money on, that's fine. But me personally, like, I don't know. I don't it's appreciate starting that. to push towards the excess. Okay, next topic, mood boards and fan casting. And here's the only reason I put this down. I feel like we see this a lot more. Mm -hmm. But then we had the blow up back in April with people using a real life human Mm -hmm. and sexualizing him Mm -hmm. and dragging his ass down through social media and going so over the top. That it hurt my heart. Mm -hmm. So with mood board and fan casting, we've seen it recently with the Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey stuff. And so what are your thoughts on mood boards and fan casting and the use of not book models, but real life humans like celebrities or athletes? I don't mind it, but I feel like there's a line that should never be crossed because like, honestly, like they're like, I'll be reading a book and I'm like, oh, this makes me think of, but a lot of times it's even a character they played, not that person themselves. Like when we did the whole Pedro Pascal effect, like right. it, it was not Pedro Pascal. It was the characters he was playing. So like, I'll read a book where it's like this, like really channels this character that I've seen in this movie or this really channels like how I think this athlete would be in real life. Like I think about those things, but that's the line for me. Like I don't and go I after that. For zone. me, I'm an actual hockey fan. And I mean, that's not news to anyone. <laughs> so I'm reading about a hockey player mm-hmm. and I, they describe this hockey player and I'm like, Oh, This, I bet he looks like this guy, or he reminds Mm -hmm. me of this guy, but not to like the gross extreme where I'm going to make nasty comments about how he does warmups because that's his job. Mm -hmm. Um, Like there's, like you said, there's a line where you're tacky and disgusting. Mm -hmm. And then there's a line where you're like, I can appreciate like, you know, you're a good looking guy. And I can appreciate the hip warmups in a hockey, like pregame. But I'm but not. I'm not going to like do anything besides appreciate them. And I like. I also think. I don't. I mean, there's. I think there's a line. And I also think some people are extraordinarily talented when they put together mm-hmm. videos or they put together, you know, these. And and I think that their talent is highlighted. So there's, unfortunately, in my opinion, there's a line, and some people cross it. Well, but it's one of those things where there's, there's, they're blurring that line of real life and fantasy 
And you have to remember, like, these are real people. They have real lives. They have real feelings. They, like, they are real. The books we read are fantasy. Like, and we need to keep them in the fantastical realm. Uh, Yeah. Like, I would never, they're real human beings with, like, yeah. real lives. Like it's yeah. weird. Well, and to... families and like all of that stuff. And that's, and that is the thing. Like you have to remember this is real. This is a great story, but it is fiction. Yeah. Okay. Right. Next thought. Books over 400 pages. We are seeing very long books starting to come out of romance. However, if I start thinking about now. Krista Sandor aside, because I really love her books. Girl writes a long book. Girl writes a long book, but it's not like she doesn't overly repeat herself. Okay. Like, but real quick, we are seeing a trend of 400, 600, 700 page romance novels. No. Leah, it's... hold on. Okay. Then I'm going to let Leah go out. Oh, we lost Heather. <laughs> and that's a okay. lot. She and it's back. a big commitment. It's a lot. And it's a big commitment. And sometimes I don't have the patience for that. Just like I don't have the patience for a duet. I mean, that's a lot. Split okay. it up or something. Okay, Heather. Or uh, Leah. Now it's okay, your turn. So, he so here's the thing. If a story is 400 pages and it warrants every single word on that page and there like you get through the story and you don't think to myself wow that could have taken like six less chapters and this would have been just as good of a book if you get into that book in 400 pages or 500 pages even like tells the most dynamic story possible and does not like warrant pulling stuff then yes write your 400 or 500 page book a 700 page book should be a fantasy like chaotic world where you need all of those like that's fine if you are creating like this magical realm of chaos you do not need to write a book that is 500 pages every single time if you do you need to find yourself a better editor who tells you you need to pull these 50,000 words because honestly, like I have read some great books that are 400 pages and I like finished that. And I'm like, holy crap, that did not feel like a 400 page book. And I have leered multiple 400 page books where I literally skip chunks, like uh -huh. chunks of book. I get bored. And did not miss a single thing. I get bored. Like you could have literally pulled a hundred thousand words out of your book in like, it would have been a much better, more so I, concise story. I just went looking to see Bane, because that's my last five-star read. Okay. 287 pages. Yes. Uh -huh. And you did not, like, feel like you didn't get enough story. Or I wasn't dynamic, missing anything. Like, relationship. Like, no. you weren't missing anything. Like, yes, I will read a book and be like, oh, man, I really could have kept reading this story. That's what I want. Like, I want to finish a book and be like, oh, I wish there was another like 30 pages of this couple. I don't want to get to the end of the book and be like, holy crap. That why was, was that so long? Why? Like, like, why? Like the Wizard of Oz. Like, that shouldn't be that long. <laughs> like, that's how I feel. Why is the Wizard of Oz so <laughs> stupid long? Why is this book so stupid long? Make it end. <laughs> it's the Wizard of Oz test now. Oh we God, now have the is. Wizard of Oz test. Okay, we're moving on to the next thing because we're going to run out of time and I want to get 10. I got a goal. Okay. okay. I mean, you did tell me to come on this. I did. Okay. One of the things that we're seeing done is troping a book and overdone and getting tropes wrong. Now, we are not going to talk about close and forced proximity. We have whole ass fucking of the time episodes. It's wrong. It's wrong so Oh much. my God, people. Build a bridge and get over it. <laughs> no, but it... You, but the thing is, if you're going to trope your book, you need to know what you're talking about. Like you need to have the correct tropes because when you go into a book expecting something and you don't get that, I am left disappointed. But also I'm so sick of those little graphics and there's 80 tropes listed for one book. I don't fucking yeah, need fair. that many tropes. But like honestly, if those tropes are in there, it's fine. But I like why? four. Like why do you need that many tropes? You don't need that many tropes. Like pick one. And stick. I'm with also it. so like sick you can of put, have one trope 
and like have a great book and you get those sub tropes by accident but you do not need 17 tropes this is also why i don't read blurbs so now i'm gonna have to stop listening to tropes because you tell me that this is an surprise baby and act but like it's shows gonna, up at the end of the book and act like it's, it's gonna be this surprise. integral part of the book and no. it doesn't happen until 62 fucking percent why was that in the damn blurb your blurb should cover only at, at longest the first two chapters I mean, maybe even the first six, but um, that's about it. No, no, two. But honestly, two. like, that's the thing. Like, I don't know how many books we've read where it's like accidental pregnancy, surprise baby. And it's like, these things do not like show up or like even brother's best friend, but like the people hate each other. Like they're not best friends. Like you, like, if you don't know how to Or they the were book, brother's best friend in high school, but they haven't spoken to the brother in 25 years. Yes. Like, why seriously? are we fucking doing this? No. Like, if you don't know. Like how to trope a book. Ask somebody for help. Like if you are just and also grumpy sunshine, not every grump is a grump. Sometimes they're just an asshole. And yes, you cannot trope your book that way. But don't call him a grump. I think you can trope your book and say he's an asshole. Well, I had small ears coming out of the bathroom, so I couldn't (laughs) say it louder. (laughs) Um, Heather, we've gone on about this. Do you have any thoughts about troping a book? No, she doesn't I mean, because do. she just she knows that we're right so she has an no opinion just don't overfill the book then it's not yeah okay really well great. this will be yours this is to you heather the dirty talk and praise mm-hmm. kink daddy stuff we love it but then it gets used when it doesn't make sense yeah so not every hero is a dirty talker the best hero that is a dirty talker is when it's a surprise. Mm-hmm. Hello, Canon. Yes. I'm looking at you. Right. Um, Spice. So also like mafia that are dirty talkers, chef's kiss. Like they can be. But you I, almost I don't expect know. it with a mafia. I know, but like canon, I love a dirty talker. But if a writer doesn't know how to do it well, don't do it. It's not your day. Well, and, and then it fine. gets like cringy. I do love a surprise dirty talker because it's like there are these really like sweet, like, like well, he nice was like the guy. good guy in the beginning of that book. Yeah. Like he's helping Canon is, you know, they're helping um Hendrick or Camden. Well. Camden, right? Because that was the one that it right? Because Camden. Camden. Yeah. yeah. So like he's helping Camden and then he gets coffee spilled on him, and then hot damn, he's got words. But that's one of those things. He's it's so spicy. It's an unexpected dirty talker. And those are the most delightful because it's like, the, they're these really sweet, like nice guys. Like Wade uh-huh. from Marilyn Kelly. You don't expect him to dirty talk the way he does. And he, he pulls that out and you're like, hello, sir. I think what happens is sometimes authors also know who's going to narrate the book. And they might try to make them be a dirty talker because the narrator is it- sort of known for it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. then it doesn't work but yeah. i also think well, this is leads into the next one which is writing to trend mm-hmm. yeah we saw this sarah kate's praise did exceptional well right mm-hmm. like that mm-hmm. book launched and we so and how many times though after that did we pick up books and i'm thinking of that last book in the jay Salmon's boston billionaires mm-hmm. um dr is that untouchable? Yes. He throws out good girls and he throws out praise kink and was but trying. It doesn't flow right with his character. And it wasn't spicy. It was cringy and it didn't work versus um, book three in Carrie and Ryan's The Wilder series. Oh, yeah. Um, uh-huh. I don't know which brother it was. That's the rock star run. Book three is the rock star, right? East. East East and Lark. It's East and Lark, right? He pulls Mm -hmm. out words and you think this is like a quiet guy, like Well, and he's a grumpy nugget of But then he like vomits these words and you're like, Yeah. Uh, Damn. Yes, man. Um Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. It works, but it doesn't always work. Like Mm -hmm. I would I would cringe, and I love her, but I would cringe if Krista Sandor threw a good girl in a mm-hmm. book. Yeah, yeah not Krista's not a good girl author. I Although mean, Vixen, she's a good girl. Not 
Christopher Rudolph Randolph Traeger, whatever his name is, I can't think of it. He's a he's a book boyfriend. He could throw I liked out, him first. He could he throw, could throw out. out a good girl. But Wild isn't a good girl guy. No, no. Dax isn't a good girl either. No, Eric. Eric is a good girl. Eric's yes. a good girl. But like, it has to make sense in the character, right? Uh-huh. And that's the thing. And I think that that's the problem with some of these authors. Like they'll throw out like because the daddy kink. Like it it's kind of more prevalent, but it's like it's such a juxtaposition with who the character is that it doesn't mesh right and if it and it if it works and it works well then go for it but it don't force it because then it gets weird okay so our vi- very last one this is one okay. that is um very current Mm-hmm. readers and mm-hmm. authors acting like they own a trope or a subgenre no no friend no one no writer owns a trope or situation or subgenre not or one. a color on a cover right no. of a christmas yep. book or a title or a title because there's like 15 with that exact title but here's the thing I romance <laughs> Romance has been around for a very, very long time. Pride and Prejudice trends, is a grumpy sunshine. Trends and tropes have been around for a very long time. One Bed, Snowed In, have, ex- have been around for a very long time. You do not own a trope. You do not own a subgenre. You do not own a situation. Because if you did, we would not have a romance genre. Um, friends to lovers, let's think about the wonder years. Seriously. Fred, and, I know. Yes. Like, boy meets Boy, 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 meets, boy meets world. world. Boy meets yeah. world. Yes. See? <clears throat> you don't own it. And if I could own it, I'm owning the hockey romance genre, like subgenre. They're online. Well, can we give exclusive all. rights to Sawyer and Kelly to only be the ones to write our hockey romance? Yeah, but that would not be right because it is a subgenre of the hockey or the romance world because there and it is is it is in every single style of literature. Like yes, like fan like science fiction does not trope their books, but like there's the basis like topic, the basis but situation. Even if you look at science fiction, they're discovering a new written. world and they're fighting against yes. aliens. It's the same fucking book. Well, and like a thriller or like things like that. Like you have the same basis, and it is what you do with it anyway. that creates the story. Like, grow the fuck up, people. Um. Okay. So, and I want to mention this one thing, and then we're gonna move on to our next thing. This mm-hmm. is a bonus ick for me because we're coming up on that time of year where people are going to start magazines and newspapers and other podcasts are going to start publishing their top books of the year. Mm. And a problem for me that comes with this is these are their top books of the years, but some of these are written by authors who the only books they read are books that are from authors that are on their label or authors that or, are their friends that they have blurbed the book for. Because when you're an author, you don't have a lot of time to read other people's books. There is a lack of transparency in these lists. And last year, it was blatantly obvious in the New oh, York yeah. Times article, the New York article, yep. the Washington Post article, and fucking Faded Mates. Like, yep. they listed their stinking friends. Now. Or people that, like, are paid to work, like, with them. Right. So, I want transparency. If you are making a year-end list, because we are going to have a top, we will have an episode at the end of the year about our top tens, and we're going to be transparent if that's an author that we have worked with or is our friend. We're going Mm -hmm. to disclose that because Leah and I, in particular, work in publishing and have author friends. Um, We do. So we're going to be transparent about that. But I encourage you that if you come across a list in the Washington Post or on Goodreads or in the New Yorker, look Maybe at who the author is, deeper. look who the mm-hmm. author is, and then say to yourself, huh, why didn't they disclose that they're on the same label as those five authors? And encourage and yeah, demand wow. transparency. Yep. 
And, and that is where a lot of authors are falling short in all aspects too. be transparent. Like we don't need to know the nitty gritty. We just need, I don't to, need know. to know how much you make. I don't care how much you make. That just, is your deal. Like you, be, you need to be open and be honest a little about what is going on. Some of the choices you're making. Yep. Okay. Or Heather, we don't need to paid. know why. We yeah, just need to know what. Right. Or if you're reading a book to, and you're getting paid to read it, say. Then tell them. Tell us, please. Correct. We want or to if know. you're promoting a book and you're getting paid to do it. Market a sponsorship. Tell us. Heather, do you have any other icks or trends that we should talk about before we get done? No. I just, people sometimes just really annoy me. So I do this magical thing. I scroll by them. <laughs> smart. So smart. I feel like I got <laughs> mommed a little bit there just now. I had no, I think but... that's for everyone. I don't I have to scroll past really them. Good... Or I, I can scroll past them because Becky doesn't. <laughs> Uh, I then just, I get all worked up and then I'm like, um, Leah. It's true. Uh, it's true. It's yeah. It it's, happens. Yeah. It does. Okay. So guess what, guys? Yeah. It's that time. It's time for, for book, book of, of the, the week. week. It's it got a little crazy there. Book of the week time. Yay! Heather, what's your uh -huh. book of the week? Uh, it's called Freeing Luca. It is by Victoria Abeline. It is book two in the Gleasman series. Um, yeah, that's a tough one. I don't know how to pronounce that one. It's aliens. Um, they are on the planet of Gleason. They go to husband school. Are you still stuck in your alien little <laughs> rabbit hole? You can't get yes. out, can you? I I mean, I'm only on book two because I it's busy right now, right. and I haven't had time to read a ton. But it's it's really good. Like it's totally a shift from what I normally read. Um, I like the books. Uh, she's like she has to build her own planet and world, and um, I humans. love when that happens. So have humans Heather? Have you read the, the Zoe Draven books that? Leah talks about all the time. The, you have not read the Horde Kings yet? No, no. And oh, I did Heather. read um because I was in my Ice Planet Barbarian yeah. era for a yeah. while and I liked them. This is similar to the Ice Planet Barbarians, but they're so not after they're these like humanish. You need to go to the Horde Kings. They Horde, are delightful. H O R D. Oh yeah. Susan H told me about that. O R D E. Yes, H O R D E. I can't spell. Kings by Kings. Zoe Draven. Yes. So good. Susan told me about them and they were delightful. You do have to read them in order because there is an overarching storyline. But the final book was like one of my books of the year last year because it um, was that good. This is a really good series. It's on Kindle Unlimited and there are 12 or seven books. <coughs> There's this is some brothers and it's very cute. I mean, they're good. I like them. I, I'd read them, recommend them. Excellent. Okay, Leah, what's your book of the week? Okay, so my book of the week is actually Reckless Hearts by Jagger Cole. Um, it is it is dark. It is dirty. It is it is a lot. So the hero's a little bit psycho. Um, he is a little bit of a bully, which I don't typically like bullies like ever in my romances, but um this one doesn't bug me. He, he's crazy crazy so crazy but she's a little crazy too so it really really works but yeah it's it's delightful um honestly if you haven't read jagger cole yet like you just you need to read him like his stories are really dynamic like he's only been writing for a couple years now and he started out with some novellas but these are full-length novels um it is interconnected with like it stands alone. You don't, you can like start here, but it does like connect with other series that he has too. Okay. But it's really well done. Um, so mine is Mary Pucking Christmas by Kelly Jameson. Nice. It's small town girl in New York city vacation holiday fling. Our hero Nils is a Viking hockey player nice. and our heroine is Harley 
this was really well done and there was like sweet emotion but really great kelly jameson spice um but i liked she did her research so she really brought in a lot of his sometimes when we get like a swedish hockey player or norwegian hockey player we don't always get a lot of like their cultural pieces into the story Mm -hmm. they're just basically americanized right yeah in this book she did a really great job about sharing his culture i believe he's from norway um and it talks about like the these bracelets that he wears and it's at christmas time so he talks about missing the food that his mother and sister would make for the holidays um and also he has a learning processing disorder and Hmm. it plays into what he does as kind of a side gig that he has that he tutors students that have a similar um, or the same processing, reading processing disorder. So it sounds very intriguing. It was very well done. And this comes and it comes out next uh, to or it comes. This drops on Sunday. It comes out on Tuesday. But Kelly Jameson is a one click must read for me. Well, it's Aww. Kelly Jameson hockey. I mean, hello. mine is like pre-ordered. Yeah. Yes. It's so good cannot recommend it enough um okay so readathon is happening this year uh typically we have it over labor day but i'm moving it to the friday after thanksgiving this year um so on friday november 24th starting at 3 p.m on the youtube um we will have 15 amazing romance authors joining me um Throughout the day, it'll be a new author every 30 minutes. I know that Duchess Katie is dropping in for a couple of segments to help me out. Um, So if you are looking for a fun thing to do and to avoid your family, come over and hang out with me on the YouTube on Friday, November 24th. Uh, We'll be having tons of romance books and fun swag. And there's some really amazing authors in the lineup Mm -hmm. it's a it is a good list this year yeah and we'll be Mm -hmm. closing out the evening at 10 o'clock with author krista sandor so who is if you hop on at one you're still gonna see cast krista sandor because she girl okay wait before her before her is melanie moreland oh Oh, so krista might not be coming on at 10 (laughs) o'clock no so it might be merging melanie and krista at 10 could you that would be the best chaos That would be good chaos. So, yeah. But there's some new authors. Amy Award, which is that Cock Down the Block book. Mm-hmm. And um, we have some we have some new authors. Ophelia will be back. Elizabeth Everett is coming on. Anyway, you can find a whole list of the lineup on our website. Um, Patreon. Patreon update. Patreon update. Um, welcome to new Patreon member, Christy. I can't remember if I thanked her in the last episode or not so i'm going to thank her this time christy thank you so much for joining our little community we hope to see you at book club and all the other fun things that we do um for those swag packs headed out this weekend i am excited to share that our swag pack sponsoring authors uh for the month of november are cambria hebert i had an extra r in my text but it's h-e-b-e-r-t Penny Reed and Aaron Nicholas. Um, Thank you to these authors for providing some spectacular swag this month, along with Buzzing About Romance swag. Um, Here are some latest releases from those authors. Cambria Hebert has Wild Card, which is book three in her Westbrook Elite. This is a college swimming romance. Um, She also has some male-male college swimming romances. This one is male-female, but just so you know, Heather. Um, <laughs> Penny Reed's latest release was her Law of Physics, book two in the Hypothesis series. And then Aaron Nicholas, Stuck by You, which releases on 1116. But if you read her as Emma Fox, um, A Merry mm-hmm. Pucking Christmas yep. what is, is out, out now. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's, and it's her and Aaron McCarthy writing, co-writing yes. together. And here's a fun thing. It's basically like that movie Four Christmases mm-hmm. in book form. So it's supposed to, it nice. was it's pretty funny. I laughed. I laughed a lot. <laughs> um, and let's just be real. Aaron Nichols 
like less yeah. mm-hmm. sweet love her love her so she's sweet. so sweet she um, writes a darn good book too she does Swag packs go out to Fancy Drinks, Cold Brew, and Queen Bean Tier, and we still have fun buzzing about romance-exclusive stickers, mood reader cards, and other fun things that come out each month. They are mailed monthly around the 10th of the month, and we do ship these internationally. This perk is mailed once monthly. If you join after the 10th of the month, your first swag pack will be mailed the following month. Because of our amazing Patreons, we're able to bring you three episodes a week, and we're still working on our goal of 75 members so that we can plan our first ever bookish meetup retreat. Um, You can find a list of all of our events at bookcaseandcoffee.com slash events, including happy hours, IG lives, and book clubs. Also, here is a plea. If you're listening to this episode and you're loving it, please leave us a review. Please hit the star ratings. Um... They help us. Also, if you're a romance reader and you have a romance book bestie, tell them about the podcast. Tell them why you love us. Um, tell 10 friends. It'll help. We promise. Tell 10 friends. <laughs> tell 10 friends. I mean, I don't even have 10 friends, so, you know. I mean, I have 10 people I claim as friends, so I wouldn't necessarily <laughs> say they are my friends. <laughs> We're so sad. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, Heather and Leah, thank you so much for talking about all the trends in romance. All Anything. the trends. All the trends. Um, anyway. Like we're some trendsetters or something. <laughs> like we have the authority. It's more like we have the audacity to comment on shit we really don't even know about. Oh, I have the audacity. <laughs> anyway. You're welcome. Thanks, everyone. Until next time. Happy reading, everybody. Find us on Instagram at Buzzing About Romance or on Twitter at Buzzing Romance. If you like the podcast, please leave a review. If you'd like to support us directly, join the Bookcase and Coffee Patreon and receive exclusive content only available to Patreon members. Check out bookcaseandcoffee.com for our on-the-shelf show notes. 